All right, before we proceed with direct on this rebuttal witness, Detective Mattingly, have you observed any of the trial testimony that's taken place since you were last here? No. Have you talked to anyone else about the testimony they've given since you were last here? No. All right, thank you for responding to those questions. Ms. Blake, if you'd like to inquire on direct, you may. Thank you. And Detective Mattingly, since it's been a moment since you've been here, would you please remind the jurors where you currently are employed? Fremont County Sheriff's Office. And how long have you been employed there? About 23 years. What is your current title or position? Detective Sergeant. Have you held other positions within the Fremont County Sheriff's Office? I have. Uh, I worked patrol and school resource officer. And at some point, did you personally become involved in an investigation into Tammy Daybell's death? I did. Do you recall approximately when you became involved? About mid-December. And was that of 2019? 2019. And again, is it fair to say that you also were involved in the investigation into the whereabouts of J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan? Yes. Were you also involved in the investigation regarding their deaths? I was. At some point, do you recall receiving the results of the autopsy for Tammy Daybell? Yes. Do you know if anyone of Chad, any of Chad and Tammy's children reached out to the sheriff's office? Judge, I'm going to object without some sufficient foundation. Overruled. And specifically in relation to those to the autopsy. I do. And who reached out? Emma Daybell or Emma Murray. Do you know at any point if anyone attempted to make contact with Emma Murray in relation to her request? Yes. Uh, I learned that Detective Kaik Kamanu had attempted to reach Judge, out. Judge, I'm an object without foundation. Overruled. I learned that Detective Kaya Kakamanu had reached out to, or attempted to reach out to Emma and Garth with no response or callback. Based on that, at some point, did you do something in relation to the autopsy results and Emma Murray? I did. What did you do? So where none of the family members were able to Judge, I'm an object is non-responsive. Overruled. Where none of the family members were contacted or had been found, we formed a team and we split up to make contact with most of the uh, Daybell children. And was that to make contact in relation to the autopsy? That specifically, yes. And who specifically were you going to attempt to make contact with? I was attempting to make contact with Emma. Do you recall approximately when you attempted to make contact with her? Uh, February 18th, 2021, after school had let out, so maybe around 4.30. And where, well, you said after school had let out. Do you know where Emma was working at that time? She was working as a teacher at Central Elementary in Sugar City. And did you attempt to make contact with her at the school? Yes. And you said it would have been after school let out? Yes. Did anyone else go with you to try to make that contact? Yes. Uh, that would be Lieutenant Ron Ball with Rexburg Police Department. And prior to this attempt to make contact, had you personally had any involvement with Emma Murray? Not personally, no. You'd not had personal contact with her prior to this? No. Were you ultimately able to make contact with Miss Murray that day? Yes, we did. Did you have some kind of a recording device on? Yes. And was a recording made of that attempt to contact her? There was. Your Honor, I have what's been marked as State's Exhibit 427, 
and defense already has a copy. And the state's intent would be to ultimately ask to publish a portion of that for identification purposes, unless there's a stipulation for admission. There's no stipulation. Okay. So without stipulation, you may just publish just enough without any content, obviously, that would influence the jury if it doesn't come in, just enough to establish foundation. I'll permit that. Thank you, Your Honor. And if I may have that, and I'll play from the exhibit for the court. Very well. Well, it's been a while, Rick. Yeah. How you been? Fine. It's been. And I'll pause right there. Detective Mattingly, do you recognize the voices in that recording? I do. And who are those voices we're hearing? Myself and Principal Rich Gardner. Does this, in fact, appear to be a correct depiction of the audio recording that you made that day? Yes. Your Honor, based on that, the state would move for the admission. Any objection? No. All right. Exhibit 427 is admitted. And your honor, the state would intend to play the exhibit uh, partway through. All right. If you'll please identify the portions you play when you publish. And your honor, the state will begin to play from minute mark 550. I was at the wrong door. I was at the front. I apologize. I'm Bruce Mattingly with Fremont Sheriff's Office. And the sheriff said that you've been working at trying to get a hold of us. Yeah. And to talk on the autopsy results. We've been trying to get a hold of you and other family members, but probably been a comedy of errors. We haven't been able to do so. Okay. And which is why we, we showed up here, because we'd like to be able to talk with family, you, because I know you've been, you were the one that made a request, yeah. right? So we'd like to be able to do that. And, and I'm going to pause here momentarily. Do you know who that female voice is that we're hearing? That was Emma Debo. And did you hear in there where she confirmed she was the one that had requested the autopsy results? Yes. I'm going to continue playing. I stopped it at 631 for the benefit of the record, and I'll continue playing from 631. Because you're here, we're here. Want to take a few minutes and talk about that and go over no, that? No, Okay. Uh, who is the attorney so we can contact? So we've worked with Josh Dreiner before, but right now we don't have any attorney client relationship with any particular attorney. Okay. So I, we, I well, think we're just, we decided we're going to wait to mm -hmm. learn what it is when you're ready to release it. Okay. Uh, that, that is a choice, but. Emmett. Oh, we, we usually just let family, we, we always let family know. Personally, I've not had anybody really say that they want to wait. That, that's a little... We're just not interested in interviewing, answering any questions. We just want to see it. Sure. Uh, we'd like to at least let you know what's in it uh, and tell you about it. We're not asking for an interview. I'm going to pause right there, Detective Mattingly. Did you hear Emma again decline to see the results? Yes. And what did you tell her in relation to whether or not she would have to 
be subjected to an interview. I told her she didn't have to do an interview. For the record, stopped at minute mark 735, and I'll continue playing from there. So, and of course, like now, if you're always free to leave, you tell us we're done, anything, we're not looking to ask questions. We do want to just let you know the findings. And again, stopping at 745, Detective Mattingly, did you again hear yourself confirm she would not have to provide information? Yes. And starting again from 749. And then later the report will, uh, uh, attorneys will get everything. But we're, we know it's back. You know it's back. We want to let family know. Okay. And, and let people know what the results are. Uh, we can't go in depth on the report, but we can talk and give general findings. At okay. least for now. So, would you like that? Would you like to do that? Uh, what, what are your. Okay, do you want me to set that up with Josh? Uh, I'll have him call you. Okay. Uh, can I give you my card so he knows who to call? That would be great. Um, what's his name? I'm Bruce, right? Yep. So, uh, I said that. Uh, he knows me, he knows my number. I also, for, for preparatory, I was hoping to find you, and I'm glad I did. This number on the back is for victim services, which helps with counseling and anything else because you lost your mom. That's what this number's for, is to help with that. Okay. okay. It is our prosecutor's office. You don't have to talk to the prosecutor. Just say, hey, I'm looking for help with victim services. Here, I'll give you that. And that's for you and for the kids. Unless your sibling. Okay. Okay. And then Josh, he can. Do you have Josh's number? Yeah. Okay. And pausing at 923, Detective Mattingly, did you in fact offer Miss Marie contact information for victim services? I did. Did you also offer her contact information for the prosecutor's office? Yes. What did you expressly tell her in relation to the prosecutor's office? To call the prosecutor's office for the help with the victim services, and more specifically, she didn't have to talk with anyone with the prosecutors. And playing from 923. All right. Are they building a new school over there? They are. We're Which growing. One is that? so that's going to be a junior high, and then they're taking third grade out of the school. This is K-3. They're moving oh. third grade over there. That's fourth or sixth right now. And so you're moving over there? Grade. Yeah, I'm moving over there. Across the field, and then they're moving sixth grade over there. There's a junior high down the road that they'll move over there, and then the high school will stay the same. We're just okay. trying to wait until it's finished. It was supposed to be done by this fall, but right. you know how <laughs> for sure. So, uh, are you increasing the principal? Uh, no, it'll be the current principal of the junior high. I'm not sure what they'll use that building for. Okay. There was talk right. about it being a YMCA, but that was just a sugar city rumor. Uh, I know how small town rumors go. Yeah, I think they just want a swimming pool. But yeah, so it'll be mostly just rotation. All right. Uh, so I, I do want to let you know, because we've been having difficulties trying to get a hold of people. Uh, today was the day that we were able to get uh, other deputies, officers to go out and try to find and make contact one way or another. Okay. So, uh, if you hear from other family members or you don't, uh, it might be dependent upon if we were able to find them or not. Okay? okay. So, I don't want that to be a big thing. I just want to let you know, hey, we haven't been able to get hold of anybody. It's important to be able to let people know. I'll have that opportunity that's what we were working on. So, okay. okay. Thank you. Yeah. I'm pausing at 1113. Detective Mattingly, you were informing her that other family members were going to be contacted. Do you recall that? Yes. Do you know who some of the other family members that contact was going to be attempted with? Judge objection on foundation. Sustain. 
Based on the investigation, did you discuss things with other investigators? Yes. And you indicated that you had met and talked about going out to try to provide results to some of the kids, the autopsy results? Yes. Do you know who some of the other individuals from the family were that contact was going to be attempted with? I do. And who was that? Judge objection, still insufficient foundation. Overall. Garth DeBell, uh, Seth, and Leah. And was the attempt to reach out to some of those kids going to be done around the same time you were attempting contact with Emma? Yes. And at the end of that, did you hear Emma tell you thank you? She did. And there was some conversation between you, Emma, and Lieutenant Ball. Did you also hear that? I did. I'm going to continue from 1113. Josh, I know we've had to get a hold of me. We've talked before. We've got to get a hold of Vance, our office. We're not that big. So, give us a call. We'll have to sit down with one of you and talk about it. That is, that is true. We did reach out. He said, Emma kind of, we were going to do a schedule, but he said, as far as I know, I'm not representing, but maybe things have changed. Okay. So, uh, uh, get that ball rolling. I'd like you to know about that. Okay. Okay. But that's, I, I, I'm not going to make anything up or make you do anything. I do want to let you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And stopping at 1214 or 1215. Detective Mattingly, at the time you were attempting to share these results with Miss Murray, was this still an active investigation? It was. And is it fair to say you were not going to provide her a copy of the autopsy at that time based on that? Correct. But you were willing to sit down and go over some of the results with her? Yes. There was some talk about an individual named Josh. Do you know who that was in reference to? I do. That was in reference to uh, attorney Josh Garner. At any point, did you attempt to make contact with Josh Garner about this? We did. What did you learn? Judge objection is going to call for hearsay. Sustain. Your Honor, and I would argue it's not coming in for the truth of the matter, but for why the officer did what he did next. Judge, it's absolutely coming in for the truth of the matter. I'm, I'm going to sustain that as hearsay, Ms. Blake. In the recording, did you hear yourself reference that he'd indicated he wasn't actually representing the kids? Yes. And was that in reference to Josh Garner? Judge, I'm going to move to strike. It was in the recording. Overruled. Yes. Did Emma ever reach out to the Fremont County Sheriff's Office again in an attempt to get the results? No. When you met with Emma, did she tell you anything about concerns regarding her mother's health? Judge objection. Oral. She did not. At the very end of the recording, you say something along the lines of, I I do want to let you know. What was that in regards to? It's in regards to the findings from the autopsy result. So you wanted to make sure that Emma Marie had access and knew the results of that autopsy? Yes. And again, Emma Marie declined to hear those results? She did. I have no further questions. Thank you. All right. All right, Mr. Pryor, cross-examination. Good morning, Detective. Good morning. Would you characterize Emma as being polite on that day? She was. Responsive? Yes. Okay. 
Now, um, the autopsy was performed on December 11th of 2019. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And you obtained the results on February 18th of 2021? No, we re had to obtain those earlier. Well, we how much earlier did you obtain the results? I don't recall. Okay. Well, was it a week? Probably a little longer. Was it a month? Could be about close to that. Was it possible it was a year you had the results? No. Okay. So we know it was close to a month. Is that what you recall? They're about yes. Okay. And you, you held the results, correct? Yes. And then at some point you elected to go notify the family. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And at the time of the autopsy on December 11th, 2019, well, let me go back. At, on, on February 18, 2021, providing the family with the results, that wasn't any kind of an investigative concern, was it? No. Okay. And a month earlier when you had the results, was there some sort of investigative concern with providing the family notification of why their mother was exhumed and an autopsy was done? Officer? Yes. What? Um, would you repeat the question? Yeah. The month before, while you held on to the autopsy, is there some investigative concern as to why you didn't let her know right away? Yes. And what was the investigative concern? On whether or not we can release the mm -hmm. autopsies, whether we can provide a copy, okay. and how best to go about doing that without violating any rights or with the investigation going on. So you were you were concerned about the investigative and not concerned about the rights of the family to know why you exhumed Objection, Your Honor. This is argumentative and it misstates the testimony just given. Sustained. So was there a concern about protecting the investigation or was there a concern about holding on to the results until you chose the time to let the family know? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Overruled. You can answer that. Repeat the question, please. Was the concern over an investigation officer or was the concern for a month that you wanted to figure out how you were going to tell the family and when? Both, I would say. Okay. Now, at the time that T T Tammy Debo was exhumed, were there concerns about the Debo five children knowing about why you're exhuming their mother? Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope. So at that time, I was not a part of the investigation. Okay. So you're not aware of any reason why they just didn't tell Garth, Mark, Leah, Emma, Seth about why their mother was exhumed. Is that correct? Objection, Your Honor. This has been asked and answered. He said he wasn't part of the investigation at that time. Sustained. Okay. I listened to the first part of the tape, officer. And it seems to mention at about 550 that Emma says to you, 550 on the tape. And if we need to go back and listen to it, it may take me a little bit, but we can do it if we need to. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And at 550 on the tape, she makes some statement. Emma makes some statement about trying to get a hold of you folks. Do you remember that? Yes. How many times did she try to get a hold of you? I'm aware of one time. Are there possibilities that she called other people within your agency or other agencies to get a hold of them about this uh, autopsy results? Possibly. Okay. And then you made something comment uh, shortly after that. I believe it was at the 6 or 602 mark where you said something about it's been a comedy of errors. What was the comedy of errors? I made that statement trying to lighten the situation about where I knew Detective Kai Kakamanu had attempted to reach out, left messages. We hadn't heard any re any returns. Okay. So you previously testified that you're aware of at least one instance where mm -hmm. Emma Murray reached out to find out why you exhumed their mother and what the results were. And then Objection, Your Honor. Mischaracterizes the testimony. There was nothing about exhuming. Sustained. Okay. Moved to strike. Strike that. So you're aware of one phone call 
where you're discussing with Emma or trying to discuss with Emma the results of the autopsy. And you're saying that because of all this difficulty communicating with the family, the expression you use to Emma is a comedy of errors to lighten the situation about telling her why her mother died, right? Objection, Your Honor. Ask and answered and mischaracterizes testimony. It's a light situation to tell a... Mr. Breyer, you didn't even answer the question yet before you... I'm going to withdraw the question, Judge. And I'll ask another question if I may. Go ahead. It's a light situation to notify a daughter as to why their mother died. Is that what you're saying? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative mischaracterizes testimony. Sustained. Move to strike. Strike that. Okay. You made a comment about to take a few minutes and talk about the autopsy results, correct? Yes. Okay. So it wasn't just a matter of letting her know what the results were, right? You wanted to t talk to her about it. About the autopsy results, right. yes. You couldn't just tell her what the results found, right? I didn't want to just throw that out there, no. Okay. Hmm. You wanted to talk about it, right? Yes. Now, as a detective, there's been previous testimony about uh, uh, carrying body cams and and recorders is is it was it your normal policy to have a body cam and a recorder on when you interview witnesses we don't have a policy on that okay so you chose in this instance to wear a recorder is that right i did did you take an instance to wear a body cam as well no so there's no policy on it but in this instance you what you were really trying to do was to capture what her reaction would be when you told her about the results. Isn't that true? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Sustained. Move to strike. Strike that question. Isn't it true your motive to, to uh, talk to Emma Murray was to gauge a reaction on tape? No. Okay. So with this in discussion about her wanting to get a lawyer, well, let me strike that. So from the time she's exhumed to December 11th of 2019 to February 18, 2021, approximately 14 months, in the interim during that time, from let's start in December of 2019 when she was exhumed, and for each and every month, at any time did you go over and try to talk to Emma Murray about what the results of her mother's autopsy was? What were those dates again? Well, the day she was exhumed, December 11, 2019, and the day you approached Emma for the first time personally was February 18, 2021, right? Correct. And during those interim times, did you or anybody from your office to your knowledge go up to any member of the Murray family and say, we're waiting on the results? Did you do that? No. Did you go up to anybody in the the Murray family or the Daybell family other than Chad and say, there's been some delays in us getting the report, but we really would like to talk to you and we'll do some pre-planning to do that. Did you do that? I did not. Okay. So after 14 months, your organization decided in mass that you're going to hit all of the kids and wear recorders and try to go tell the kids about what's going on. Correct. Objection, Your Honor. Misstates the testimony argumentative. Overruled. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And then at some point, you know who Josh Garner is, right? I do. You've had encounters with him, correct? Yes. And at some point, you were aware that Emma had retained Josh Garner, correct? We learned that she had not. Prior to that time, were you aware that she had made re had representation through him? Yes. Okay. So you knew that there was a potential connection there, correct? Correct. And would you really blame her, Emma, if after 14 months of not hearing anything from your organization, she's a little skeptical to talk to you folks about what you're wanting to say to her? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Sustained. Move to strike. Strike that question. You did mention that you weren't inter interested in interviewing her and asking any questions. You did say that, though, right? Yes. Okay. So your, your explanation is that 
you wanted to be more sensitive to her about letting her know what the results were, correct? Absolutely. And you wanted to sit down with her and have an opportunity while the recorder is on to gauge her reaction, right? I wanted to sit down and discuss that with her, not just for any reaction. And then at the end, when you're talking about the school, was that also a police tactic to sort of soften her a little bit so that maybe she would open up and talk to you about things? That was Lieutenant Ron Ball who had made that statement and questioned her about that. Well, I don't care who made the statement. I asked whether it was a police tactic. Objection, Your Honor. Calls for speculation. Sustained. Move to strike. Strike that question. And then you suggested to her that she get information from the um, victim services, correct? Yes. Okay. And the victim services, is that a an office within the prosecutor's office? The prosecutor's office helps manage victim services. So a fancy way of saying that is the prosecutor has the authority over victim services or the when you say manage, they supervise the victim services program, correct? As I understand, correct. Okay. So the prosecutor's office, that would be the same prosecutor's office that issued the order to exhume Tammy Daybell, right? Objection, Your Honor. This is a uh, misstates evidence. Prosecutor's offices don't issue orders. Oh. All right, Ms. Blake, this is part of the reason why I don't like speaking objections because now you put that out there. I'm overruling the objection. If the witness knows the answer, he may answer that and you can correct that on redirect. Would you ask that again, please? Well, the the prosecutor's office was the organization in this in Madison County and Fremont County to pursue in, you know, trying to get an order to have Tammy Daybell's body exhumed, correct? That was done through a prosecutor's office, I believe, in Utah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the information was to obtain, or the purpose was to obtain information around surrounding an investigation of Tammy Daybell in, the, in this area as well, right? Yes. Okay. So would it surprise you if Emma Murray would be quite hesitant to approach an organization affiliated with the prosecutor's office when she wasn't told her mother was being exhumed? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative calls for speculation. Sustained. So you gave her information from organizations that are managed and organized by the prosecutor's office, correct? Yes. And the purpose of that was that they could use utilize those services to maybe have someone talk to them about what's going on in the case, right? Among other things. What are such, the other things? Such as counseling. Okay. And you're very concerned about the counseling with the Daybell children 14 months after their mother was exhumed, right? Objection, Your Honor. Argumentative. Overruled. Yes. Well, why weren't you so concerned on the day their mother was exhumed and she wasn't, and the whole family on both sides wasn't notified that they were taking their mother out of her burial site? Objection, Your Honor. This is argumentative. Sustained. I have the strikes. Nothing else, Judge. Thank you. All right. That last question of counsel is stricken. That concludes cross. Ms. Blake, you can redirect. Detective Mattingly, counsel asked you about Emma being polite. Is that fair? Yes. From what you heard in the audio, were you also polite? I believe I was. Was Detective Ball polite? He was. Were any threats made to Emma? None. I think you testified the autopsy report. Maybe the results had come in approximately a month before, give or take. Yes. And you, in fact, were there to try to share the results of that report with Ms. Murray. Is that correct? Correct. And she declined? She did. 